guys my name is m chitra shri i am studying 10th standard i am going to talk about my innovation for indian problem what are the current major issues in india corruption the most widely spread endemic in india is corruption which must be handled quickly and wisely there is hardly any office in the both the private and public sector that is untouched from this disease there is no telling how much loss the economy has suffered because of this the most office are constant when the time comes to act with the people of india should not found lacking illiteracy the percentage of illiteracy in india is alarming though 74.4% of people were counted as literate in 2011 since there is a wide disparity between rural and urban areas and male and female population the condition in village is worse than cities though a number of primary schools have been set up in rural india the problem presents many people who were counted as literate can barely read or write hence providing education just to children won't solve the problems of illiteracy as many adults in india are also untouched by education education system the education system of india is blamed every now and then for being too thermonetically but not practically and skill based students study to score marks not to gain knowledge this is so called modern education system was introduced by the colonial masters to create servants who could sir but not lead and we still have the same education system healthcare system it is true that the world's most populous democratic country cannot provide proper healthcare facilities to entire population india has become a hub for medical tourism but all their facilities are not available to local residents who happen to be poor healthcare is neglected issue in india has major attention drawers or agriculture infrastructure and it lack of resources in rural india is major concern of a day leading the most problems 50% of all villagers have no access to healthcare providers infant mortality rate imr is 34 per 1000 lives birth lack of nutrition caused stunning growth in 50% of all the babies and 36% people in india have no access to toilets pollution pollution and environmental issues are the other challenges that india is facing at the present though india is working hard there is no long way to go degradation of land depleting nature resources and loss of biodiversity are the main issues concerned due to the pollution the ganga and yamuna rivers are today two of the most polluted rivers in india same in the condition of other rivers that pass through populated cities and polluted cities additionally increasing construction and vehicular traffic also contribute to pollution in cities india need to embark on a model of sustainable development women safety both men and women enjoy equal opportunities but as far as freedom and safety of women are concerned india lags behind issues like domestic violence rape and women in media etc must be tackled immediately infrastructure in india needs to work swiftly on its infrastructure development towards better roads housing and service like water sanitation primary health care etc unemployment nowadays is very common among the youth this situation is also known as jobless moreover it is a setup of circumference where an able bodied person is willing searching for a job but is not able to find it we can calculate the percentage of unemployment people prevalent in the economic by dividing it with the number of individual currently present in the labor force the government of must take the necessary step to eradicate it by creating more ground, government and public sector job opportunities also it needs to support private sector in industries that could provide jobs to one who really deserve it has per the 2018 data the rate of unemployment has increased to 3.53% from 3.52% in 2017 if not tackled immediately it will become a challenge for our society and economic poverty poverty is about not having enough money to meet basic needs including food clothing and shelter however poverty is more much more than just not having enough money the world banking organization describes poverty in this way poverty is hunger most often poverty is situation people who want to escape state 
and poverty percent of people below poverty line karnataka 20.97% uttar pradesh 29.43% madhya pradesh 31.65% assam 31.98% odisha 32.59% bihar 33.74% arunachal pradesh 34.67% manipur 36.89% jharkhand 36.96% chatisgarh 39.93% these are the state which have below poverty line thank you one and all myself zohra khanam from 10th standard today i'm here in front of you with an interesting topic called self reliant india this is also known as atmanirbhar bharat the year 2020 has been a disastrous one can you guess why obviously due to the rapid spread of corona virus which eventually led to a pandemic not just for india but for every country in the world the disease impacted the country's economy on large scale thus further damaging the growth and progress in these times where economy seem to fall with each passing day prime minister of india sri narendra modi ji introduced a concept called atmanirbhar bharat on 12th of may 2020 prime minister narendra modi ji announced a package of 20 lakhs crore to revive the economy and address the issues affecting various sections of people The package is about 10 percentage of India's total GDP gross domestic product. Gross domestic product is the final monetary value of the goods and services produced within the country during the specified period of time. Normally, a year in simple terms, GDP is the measure of GDP is the measure of country's economic output in the year. The largest component of GDP has not only declined as the share of GDP 68 percent in 1990 to 56 percent in 2019, but also in terms of growth rates in recent years. The consumption demand of the rest of the demography, mostly in agriculture, small scale manufacturing. and self employed is not increasing due to the low income growth self reliant india is a mission and a vision of our minister to make india self reliant atmanirbhar means to give preference to indigenous products and ensuring that these products match to their imported counterparts self reliant doesn't mean that we are cut off from the global world but it actually means that we are able to produce the product and eventually play a larger role with global economy the five pillars of atmanirbhar bharat focus on economy infrastructure system vibrant demography and demand the five phases of atmanirbhar bharat are phase number 1 business including msmes phase number 2 poor including migrants and demo farmers phase number 3 agriculture phase number 4 new horizons of growth phase number 5 government reforms and enables the self reliant india is an important mission for an, for the economic revival and progress of the indian economy under lockdown indian economy have huge potential to achieve self reliance but it requires proper implementation of laws made by government and proper allocations of fund allotted by the government not only rural urban but rural sector also have great capacity to develop if proper policies are made and implemented government should give all the facilities to develop those sectors uh, those sectors which have potential to take innovation step this is not only government's responsibility but also customers responsibility to uh, to consume domestically produced goods because demand is the main determinant to develop any sector thank you hi my name is e muskan khanam from 10th e 73 adventist school my innovation for indian problems if innovators can save indian problems they can save the world topic deforestation deforestation means instant cutting of trees forest and plantation for industrial and man made purposes deforestation is mainly done for land clearances which can be further utilized for human settlement and urbanization as the human population grows the need of houses and cities are felt desperately in order to provide better standard of living to everyone after deforestation a forest animal started coming regularly in the houses of people and creating havoc in their society a value of forest forest are important upon us by nature they are regularly providing us with food wood air to breathe and many other essential services they are also home for several living organisms forest act as a natural atmospheric purifier they help in managing 
climate, soil erosion, and controlling noise pollution. Forests do contain some herbs which are used in making up medicines. Forests help in maintaining of oxygen and carbon dioxide. Woods have been of great importance historically from the ancient time, used for many purposes like heating fuel, building houses, sheep, paper production, and many more daily activities of the human beings. Forests are very necessary for us and our future generation to enjoy and live a healthy and peaceful life in a healthy environment free of pollution. More Moreover, there must be control of human population. Similarly, the government should put a ban on deforestation. Thank you. ஸ்ரீ சாராம் மரங்கள் இல்லாமல் மனித குழமே கிடையாது அந்த மரங்களைப் போல திகழும் எனது ஆசிரிய பெருமக்களுக்கும் மற்றும் என்னுடன் பயின்று வரும் எனது மாணவ சகோதர சகோதரிகளுக்கும் எனது மனமார்ந்த நன்றியினை தெரிவித்துக் கொள்கிறேன் அதனோடு வணக்கத்தினையும் நான் தெரிவித்துக் கொள்கிறேன் எனது பெயர் ரா கௌசல்யா நான் ஸ்ரீ சத்யசாய் பள்ளியில் பதினோராம் வகுப்பு படித்து வருகிறேன் நான் இன்று சுயசார்பு இந்தியா என்னும் தலைப்பை தேர்ந்தெடுத்து அதில் எனக்கு தெரிந்தவற்றை எனது நாட்டினை பற்றி நான் எனக்கு தெரிந்த சில குறிப்பினை தங்களுடன் பகிர்ந்து கொள்வதற்காக இன்று வந்துள்ளேன் எனது தேசத்தின் மீது நான் வைத்துள்ள பற்றினை கூறுவதற்காக மற்றும் எனது தேசத்தினை பற்றி நான் தெரிந்தவற்றினை தங்களுடன் பகிர்ந்து கொள்வதற்கு எனக்கு இத்தகைய ஒரு வாய்ப்பளித்ததற்கு மிகவும் நன்றி சுயசார்பு இந்தியா என்னும் தலைப்பில் நான் கூறுவது என்னவென்றால் இரண்டு தலைப்பினை ஏற்று அந்த தலைப்பினை பற்றி விரிவாக்கம் செய்வதற்காக வந்துள்ளேன் அந்த தலைப்புகள் எனது தேசத்தின் மீது நான் வைத்துள்ள பற்று அதாவது ஓர் மனிதனின் தேசப்பற்று ஆகும் மற்றும் தண்ணீர் தேசப்பற்று நாம் தேசப்பற்று என்பதனை எடுத்துக்கொள்ளும் பொழுது சிறு பிள்ளை முதல் பெரியோர் வரை அனைவரும் தனது நாட்டினை நேசிப்பதும் தனது நாட்டின் மீது பக்தி மற்றும் மரியாதையை வைப்பது என்பது மிகவும் அவசியமே ஆகும் ஏனெனில் நாம் அந்த நாட்டில் வாழ்வது மற்றும் அந்த நாடே நமக்கு உரிமை அளிக்கிறது தண்ணீர் தண்ணீரினை பற்றி நாம் நன்றாகவே அறிந்திருப்போம் ஏனெனில் இவ்வுலகில் வாழும் அனைவருக்கும் தண்ணீர் என்பது மிகவும் முக்கியம் ஆகும் அந்த தண்ணீரை குடிக்காமல் நம்மால் உயிர் வாழ்வதென்பது இயலாது ஓர் மனிதன் ஐந்து நாட்கள் வரையே தண்ணீர் இல்லாமல் உயிர் வாழ முடியும் பிறகு அவன் எப்படிப்பட்ட சூழ்நிலையாக இருந்தாலும் தண்ணீர் உட்கொள்வது என்பது மிகவும் முக்கியமே ஆகும் தண்ணீரை பற்றி பேச வேண்டும் என்றால் அதாவது தண்ணீரினை நாம் எப்படி சேமித்து வைக்கலாம் என்றால் ஏரி குளம் குட்டை ஆறு மற்றும் கிணறு ஆகியவற்றில் சேமித்து வைத்து நாம் அதை பதமாகவும் வீணாக்காமல் பயன்படுத்துதல் என்பது மிகவும் முக்கியம் ஆகும் Hi everyone, I am Swati and I am from the Vijay Millennium School, Krishnagiri. I have chosen the topic, Clean and Green India. So, let's talk about pollution. What is pollution? Pollution is the introduction of harmful substances called pollutant into the environment, thus making the environment unclean. There is an endless list of pollution. Air pollution, water pollution, soil pollution, you name it, we pollute it. But, I am not going to talk about any of these pollution. I am going to talk about a new kind of pollution that India is facing right now. What are we going to talk about? 
Let me give you small hints by asking you some questions. How many masks do your family members use per day? Has everyone in your family taken swab test? What do you think happened to those cotton swab and the test tube in which they are stored? Yes, you have guessed right. I am going to talk about the medi waste that India is producing due to the COVID-19 pandemic or conveniently called the COVID waste. COVID waste includes masks, gloves, PPE kit, swab test kit, bedspread and so on. And as you know, almost 50% of this waste is made up of plastic. We casually throw out the masks and gloves after using them. But do you have any idea how long it takes for them to decompose? It takes almost 450 years for mask and 5 years for gloves to decompose. You may now say, alright, from now on I am going to dispose my masks and gloves properly. But do you know, even our country is facing a hard time in disposing them. Between June 2020 and May 2021, in a span of just 6 months, India produced 50,000 metric ton of COVID waste only. Additionally, Every year, India produces 3.3 million metric ton of plastic waste. And the number of plastic recycling plants we have in India is far too low to bear the burden of recycling all this waste. Also, COVID waste needs special care and treatment like sterilization before using them again as they pose a threat of spreading the virus. Naturally arises the question, what can we do to save the environment? We definitely can't stop using masks and gloves. We can't ask our doctors to stop using the PPE kit. We can't reduce the usage of these items too. What we can do is reduce the generation of other plastic wastes like plastic bottle, chips packet and so on. We can start using recyclable and reusable masks and gloves. Showa invented the world's first latex-free biodegradable gloves. We can start using them. We also should find a safe way to either dispose, reuse or recycle the PPE kit, swap kit and other COVID waste. And if you don't get COVID and stay healthy and safe at home, I'm pretty sure we can reduce the COVID waste generation. So stay home, stay safe and thank you for investing your valuable time in me. Hey everyone, I am Maria Jocelyn from the Vijay Millennium Senior Secondary School, Krishnagiri. I strongly believe that female feticide is an eternal sin. And I am going to speak about the causes, effects and my innovations and ideas to prevent female feticide which leads to the development of India autonomically. Firstly, we can see what causes female feticide in India. The preference of male children among Indian families has resulted in about 63 million women statistically missing. This obsession with sons had led Indians to resort to female feticide on a massive scale. A boy is widely viewed as an asset, a future breadwinner and a caregiver who look after his parents when they become old. A girl on the other hand is seen as a liability as parents are often pressured to pay dowries when they get married. It has been revealed that preference of son over daughter is a major reason for female infanticide in many countries around the world. Dowry system in India makes daughter an unaffordable economic burden. This contributes to the female infanticide. It's a bitter truth that one out of every three girls doesn't live to see her 15th birthday. Every sixth girl child's death is due to gender discrimination. One out of every ten women reported some kind of sexual abuse during childhood. India witnesses one of the highest female infanticide in the world. This is also due to India's weak social security system. Secondly, the effects of female infanticide are uncountable. This results in the decrease of female population. For a country like India, there should be a balance in sex ratio which affects the development of country. Female feticide also results in adverse effects on women's health physically, mentally and emotionally. Finally, how could these actions be controlled or prevented? Awareness among newly married couples, making them understand that they are practicing wrong,
conducting rallies and gathering organizations to solve these issues. The important thing is that to educate a girl child. Educating girls saves lives, builds stronger communities and economies. Please don't act wild. Save girl child. You know, just like water, what a society needs most is a girl. பெண் பிள்ளை பிறந்ததே என்று வருத்தப்படும் தகப்பனுக்கு தெரிவதில்லை தன் கடைசி காலத்தில் தன்னை பார்த்து கொள்ள இறைவன் அனுப்பி வைத்த வரம்தான் பெண் என்று சேவ் கேர்ள் சைல்டு Hello everyone this is Darshni from the Vijayanagaram Senior Secondary School Krishnagiri here to speak on the topic self learned india now let's know about our country's self reliancy since after its independence world's first university takshashila was formed in india india has the second largest pool of scientists and engineers in the world milk production the creation of dairy farmers corporation resulted india to be the top one country for milk production food production a new agriculture strategies of 1960s and the arrival of green revolution resulted india of becoming an exporter of surplus grains india has the world's largest drone force and india is one among the strongest army force in the world even at this situation india has so far supplied covid vaccines to more than 90 countries 70% of the world's spices comes from india ayurveda the earliest form of medicine was found in india now let's come to the current situation the covid-19 pandemic is having a great impact on the economies around the world and india is not an exception in order to help the country cope with the pandemic the government of india had made few of policy reforms and announcements with the aim to revive the economy of our country prime minister narendra modi emphasized the necessity of self reliant india or atmanirbhar bharat as a citizen of india we can make our country self reliant by purchasing goods from farmers instead of purchasing goods from agro based processing industries young people should come forward for their work related to knowledge and technology do new research and make india self reliant we all know that dr apj abdul kalam's one day dream was to make india a developed nation by 2020 though it couldn't happen we the citizens of india can make india a self reliant country and developed nation by 2030 and fulfill the dream of Dr Abdul Kalam Hello everyone. I am happy to participate Kalam in new contest by Knowledge Institute of Technology. My name is Harini Shri. I am studying 9th standard. I have chosen the topic of self-reliant India and opportunity. At a time when the world is suffering from a deadly pandemic, India plans to convert this crisis into an opportunity and strengthen its fight by becoming what man it was self-reliant. The term was coined by the Prime Minister of India, Mr. Narendra Modi, during his addresses to the nation on May 12, 2020. 
ஹி கோல்டு திஸ் கம்பைன் ஆஸ் ஓத்ம நிர்போர் போரத் அபியான் செல்ஃப் ரிலையன் இந்தியா மூமெண்ட் ஹி ஆல்சோ டிஃபைன்ட் ஃபைவ் புல்லர்ஸ் ஆஃப் ஓத்ம ரிபோர் போரத் இஸ் எக்கனாமி இன்ஃப்ராஸ்ட்ரக்சர் சிஸ்டம் டெமோகிராஃபி அண்ட் டிமெண்ட் ஹி ஸ்ட்ரெஷ்டு தட் இட் இஸ் டைம் டு பிகம் வோக்கல் ஃபார் அவர் லோக்கல் ப்ராடக்ட்ஸ் அண்ட் மேக் தெம் குளோபல் அண்டர் திஸ் கம்பைன் எ ஸ்பெஷல் எக்கனாமிக் பேக்கேஜ் ஹாஸ் பின் ரிலீஸ்டு பை த கவர்மெண்ட் விச் வில் பெனிஃபிட் வேரியஸ் செக்மெண்ட்ஸ் இன்க்ளூடிங் கோட்டேஜ் இண்டஸ்ட்ரி மைக்ரோ ஸ்மால் அண்ட் மீடியம் என்டர்பிரைசஸ் மிடில் கிளாஸ் அண்ட் இண்டஸ்ட்ரீஸ் அண்ட் எமோங் அதர்ஸ் பிஎம் மோடிஸ் ஃபைவ் புல்லர்ஸ் ஆஃப் மேக்கிங் இண்டியா செல்ஃப் ரிலையன்ட் இஸ் ஃபார் எக்கனாமி வி ஹாவ் டு பிரிங் அண்ட் எக்கனாமி த டசின் பிரிங் இன்க்ரிமெண்டல் சேஞ்ச் பட் குவான்டம் ஜம் for infrastructure we need an infrastructure which can become the identity of modern india for system a system that doesn't follow norms of the previous century it should be able to fulfill our 21st century dreams and be technology driven for vibrant democracy it is our strength it is the source of energy for our dream to make india self reliant demand the demand supply chain is our power we should use it to its full potential the economic package that was announced by the prime minister along with the various package released during the lockdown period is around 283 billion which is about 10 percentage of india's gdp it is expected to provide support and strength to various section of the country and give a renewed boost to the development journey of the country in 2020 in order to prove the determination of self reliant india land labo liquidity and laws have all been emphasized in this package a self reliant india does not mean turning the country inwards or into an isolationist nation but to embrace the world by becoming stronger external affairs minister dr s jayshankar clarified that the call for self reliant india doesn't mean shutting down doors to globalization but to grow with the world a self reliant india will have more to offer to the world thank you hello everyone i am streleka from sri amitta high secondary school tirupattur i would like to share my points on clean and green india the major problem in india is the use of plastic many plastics are chemical laden these chemicals are commonly known as phthalates they are used to make plastic more flexible and transparent plastic release toxins and they are extremely harmful to our body they can damage our kidney liver lungs and reproductive system waste to minimize the use of plastic in grocery shop carry a cloth bag non woven wooden handle bags while going to shop this would minimize the use of plastic again we are aware already that we are going to take meat so carrying a vessel with you would be useful in olden days they use palm leaves to buy meat in hotels and restaurants Carry a tiffin box while going to hotel. Food should be served in plantain leaves, paper plates or patchavali leaves. It is nothing but sal leaves or banyan leaves stitched by tiny wooden sticks. Okay.
eco-friendly, we can reduce the use of plastic. Avoid use and throw culture. Instead, shift to reduce, recycle, reuse culture. Let's all join hands together, put ban on plastic bags and make earth a better place to live for future generations. It is every citizen duty to save our earth. Thank you for giving me this wonderful opportunity. My sincere thanks to KIOT, Knowledge Institute of Technology. Keep it clean, keep it green. Say no to plastic bags and save our environment. Thank you. Saving money is also equal to earning money. This lead lab concept teaches how to save water, how to save energy, how to uh, save our resources. All department students have big opportunity. Once they get certificate from LEED, they can work for smart cities. They will have very bright futures, especially in India and all over the world.